Hey, Kenny. It's uh, Peter, and I've got the pictures of your $100, uh, uh, oh, I guess it was like a flea market buy or something like that. Um, swap meet. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's a nice jar. Uh, you, you were smart to buy it immediately. You know that. Uh, it, it's not a Kung Shi jar, though, in my opinion. I think it, it, it's an old one. It's 18th century, but I don't think it's Kung Shi. I think it was probably made during the uh, Qinlung period. Um, the, from what I'm seeing, the, the way the foot is trimmed, the paste is nice and tight, like you see on 18th century wares. Uh, the foot rim looks pretty good, but it looks a bit rounded off. The shape just doesn't have the right uh, tone and texture for uh, Kung Shi, in my opinion. But it certainly looks, um, and that, that's a normal fire. That's just, that crack on the bottom is just, as you know, from shrinkage during the, the firing process. When they make it, the, the, the paste pulls back a little bit. And so you, let me fix the screen here. There we go. Uh, pulls back a little bit. So that's all that is. Um, so don't pay it any mind. There's a chance, after looking at it, that the foot might have been, uh, and they do used to do this sometimes, especially if they were fitting them onto stands, um, might have polished and rounded this foot out a little bit. Um, um, normally you see, you know, you see some trim marks and so forth. It looks awfully round and smooth. If you run your finger over it, it do you feel any knife marks or anything from, from trimming? Uh, because typically uh, they're not quite this rounded. Um, um, it's not impossible, but it's just, it would, it, it's a little unusual. Um, the shape of the foot, but it's an 18th century vase. It is what, 13 inches tall, you said? 13 inches tall. Um, it looks to be in very nice condition. Uh, you know, see if you can find a good lid and a base to put under it. It would be spectacular. Or put flowers in it, even better yet. You know, spring is here. Put some put something nice in it. Check, the, put some water in it first to make sure it doesn't leak. It probably won't. The, those cracks don't often go through. Um, and to, you know, uh, to, 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 they don't go through. That's all. Um, they tend to the glaze on the inside tends to block it. Uh, but the shape, the potting of this is wonderful, and it is a Kung Shi shape. It is a shape that they did the examples in the Kung Shi period. The blue just looks a little bit too light to me, um, and it may be the lighting, but the, the and the foot rim doesn't look quite right. But it, it's certainly 18th century, and if I were you know, looking at it based on that, I would date it as an 18th century um, Chin Lung probably example. Um, very nicely done and certainly worth more than much paid for it. Uh, you got a good buy. Um, the value of this vase, uh, if you were to sell it on eBay or put it in an auction somewhere, would probably be in the uh, $650, $700 to $1,000 range. Somewhere at nine hundred dollars, something like that. Six six fifty nine six ninety seven hundred and up is maybe as high as nine hundred bucks, depending on how it looks in the photographs. But it's a nice thing, and the reason these are so popular, the reason they, they sell fairly well, is that um, and they can bring more. I, I've seen them actually bring more than that on occasion, but I don't like to throw out big estimates and then you know say, well, it, you know, thirteen hundred and it ends up going for nine hundred and everybody gets mad at me. <laughs> I don't have a crystal ball. I, I just base it on what I, you know, I base estimates based on what I've seen similar, a, a bunch of similar examples sell for over the last 40 years. Uh, but it's it's a, it's a perfectly nice vase. Um, and uh, we're great with flowers coming out of it because it's got a nice strong body. So I would look into doing that. But 18th century worth 700 to with $900 and you got a bargain. All right, bye-bye. Hey, Kenan. Uh, Peter and uh, got your pictures here of this Celadon looks a little bit like a Sung brush washer um, this is not an old one um, the, the color of the paste for Sung is wrong um, and uh, the way it's done it just it's too fresh um, there is some wear here but it's not the texture of the paste isn't consistent with Sung paste and um, uh, it's, just, it's just it's just the wrong paste. It's it's a contemporary paste. This is the this oatmeal color is what you see on a lot of the reproductions these days. Yeah, what my advice to you is, unless you're getting it from a major dealer or from a major auction house with some history, do not go near Sung Celadons today unless you really really can tell. Uh, the copies are so good. So are the Guan wares. So are the Gi wares. They are perfecting them, and they're flooding the market. Right now, the market is flooded with fakes of Sung Celadons. Flooded. 
um, and I've seen a couple pop up at one of the major auction houses too, but it didn't sell. It didn't. It didn't bring anything. Um, they don't. They don't sell there because everybody recognizes them. But uh, uh, I would. I would just say to you, uh, unless you, unless you're planning on, on on buying in the deep end of the pool with with you know through a major collector or dealer, or, or you know that kind of thing, uh, the chances of buying a, a good. Song, Northern Song, Southern Song piece today um, in this in this material is zero, pretty much, um, unless it's unless it's coming out of a very good documentable old collection. And if it's not coming from one of those, I would I would just urge you to stay away from them. They are going to get you every time because they are getting so good at getting that foot rim right and getting the, uh, the, 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 the shape of the body right. And the, and the glaze is just a glaze, it's chemistry. So it's, it's, it's getting increasingly difficult to detect them. And uh, I've been telling people, unless you can uh, um, get a lot of provenance and guarantees, don't even consider buying any Sung looking celadons. Okay, it's just, it's just a warning. I'm, I, I don't like to see, I consider you people my friends, and I, I hate to see people uh, chase things that are uh, in, you know, bad. And uh, right now the market is as flooded as it ever has been with high grade copies. I'm seeing transitional wear pieces that are being made right now that are phenomenal quality, phenomenal. And they're getting past a lot of, a lot of sharp people. All right, okay. Have a good week and uh, I, hope you didn't, I hope you didn't put too much money into it. If you, if you bought it on eBay, send it back. Okay? Okay. Bye-bye. Okay. Hey, you. How are you? I uh, got your inquiry here for, for your uh, Long Quan uh, dish. Uh, it looks absolutely fine. Your, yeah, I think your, your understanding of it is correct. This is exactly what the uh, bottoms of one of these should look like. On the copies they're making today, it, 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 the, you'll find that when they, they add this red area on the bottom using uh, rust water or something, I don't know what they use, but it makes it red. But it's, it tends to be much too perfectly circular. It's too neat, too orderly. And you don't see these little flecks of where, where it was resting on this. This is caused by it's resting on a little stand. And when they remove it at the end, sometimes it pulls off a little bit of the the, the pot bottom right here and here you see you see these areas and you have these little craters that appear and so forth that's just from the the, the ring the ring stand that it's fired on get, getting stuck to it a little bit but it's the way that they can then when they make it they can glaze the foot rim so when they put it on a wooden surface it doesn't scratch it and that's the really the main reason for it but it absolutely looks like a, a, a legitimate Long Quan uh, Celadon and as you know the Long Quan kilns were basically shut down at around by around 1550 and leading up to that shutdown they, they, the output was getting smaller and smaller so uh, from a dating standpoint I'd say this is probably a 15th century a late 15th century or mid 15th century example I don't think it's sung um, or anything like that but it's very nicely done this is a good little piece of porcelain um, and uh, I don't remember it at Doyle's, but I don't remember everything that Doyle sold over the years. So there you are. You have these little spot splatters here. Um, you might want to see if that won't clean off. That I don't think that's a uh, when you blacklight it. I don't think those are repairs. I think it's just things that fell on the plate that fluoresce when it's uh, when it's when it's when it, when you when you put the light on it. Or they could be fairly recent areas of wear that haven't uh, softened yet for the black light. But um, you might try cleaning this with a, uh, some fingernail polish remover or something. Something this may be adhesive or some something got on here. I don't know what it is, but it doesn't look like a repair. It looks like like something incidental just got on the plate. Um, so it doesn't bother me at all. These are these speckles. That's that's not the sign of a repair. Um, and it may just be the the, uh, the the under under the glaze where it's been scratched, just sh fluorescing through. And that's all it is, which is fine. Uh, it's a nice looking thing. I don't know what you paid for it, but um, um, uh, it it looks like a you know a, 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 oh I don't know on the a low side that could could have sold for seven or so hundred, and on the high side could have gone for as much as eleven or twelve hundred, somewhere in there. Um, nice looking porcelain, looks absolutely authentic. 
Um, the potting is good. The, sh the, the shape is nice. And, um, you know, it's a, it's a good piece of ceramic. They did a good job with it. Um, and it's, you know, I don't think it's remotely close to a copy. Um, it looks absolutely fine. All right. So you did good. <laughs> uh, it's nice to find a good old piece like this. It's a good look. One. It's probably a brush washer, I would assume. I don't know what, but what was it described as? Um, mm, oh, you, you put the link in here. Okay, let's hold on a second. I didn't see this before. Wait a minute. There we go. Do, do, do. Oh, there it is. What'd you pay for it? Eight fifty-eight. There you go. <laughs> okay, I was pretty close. Um, yeah. No, that's fine. Who'd you get it from? Oh, Thousand Eye. Uh, he's a pretty good seller. He's in New York, right? Right, Rago Park, New York. Yeah, I know who he is. I don't know him uh, personally. I've never met him, but but it, we've had him in the newsletter before. Um, um, yeah. Yep. Yep, yep, yeah. We've seen his things before. Um, he tends to do mostly buy it nows, but occasionally he throws in some auction items, like this uh, Chinese mother of pearl inlaid box, uh, for example. It's probably for the Vietnamese market, by the way. Most of these are, yeah, yeah. You find these all over Vietnam. Um, they were very popular in Vietnam. Um, so, at any rate, uh, yeah. So it looks absolutely fine. Um, uh, so enjoy it. There you go. I don't know what you're going to do with it, but uh, enjoy it if you're keeping it. But it looks like a brush washer to me, so that's what I suspect it is. Okay. Bye-bye. Hello, Pavelus. It's uh, Peter, and uh, I've got the pictures here of your blue and white Japanese vase you think might be a Kozan vase. Um, I want you, before I start, I want to tell you there's a lot of copies of Kozan, Kozan vases out there, and um, there's a certain style to his blue and white pieces that are uh, extremely fluid, as you know. Um, uh, very gentle shading, uh, lots of uh, uh, depth of field in his work. And I'm going to take a look. I'm going to. Pu I pulled up a couple of uh, examples of, of his pieces. Uh, these are examples that sold at uh, Bonhams, and I, I think one of them is maybe at Christie's. I'm not, I got to check, but anyway, this is the decoration, and you'll notice here you got this light blue cloud in the background, even lighter grayish colors in the background, then uh, a light blue mountain rather in the background, and then you have this cloud, and then you have this very, very, very meticulous, very neatly done layering effect of rocks coming out, sort of pouring out like this. And uh, when you come over here to this, you have that same sort of effect, this, this stacked layer effect of rocks and these, these misty, misty pine trees. And then as you move into the foreground, it gives a real three-dimensional look. And then you move to the foreground and it gets darker and darker. So the, the whole thing just sort of flows up with the pine trees, the mist going between the tops of the pine trees and the rocks and then, and then upward. And that very, very creamy, soft glaze white porcelain that they use but very very perfectly potted and uh, when you come over to this piece it it, it it doesn't have that sort of the, the the way the rocks are drawn if you look at them you know you have to look at them honestly um, you don't see this that sort of layering effect here for example that you would see on here or here the, this business up here okay there all right they, it just isn't there. And the same on the back. I mean, they've got the, the misty stuff is pretty good there. But when you get up into these uh, areas up here, uh, you have these sort of uh, bumpy lines um, here. You notice that they're not defined. And when you come over here to these, they're very defined and, and they're usually outlined on top of it. And the same thing up here. Okay. It's the mist sort of is almost just just flowing. And over here, the mist isn't flowing. It's sort of just cut off. You have these sort of jagged edges. So what I think this is, from what I'm seeing, and the potting doesn't look quite right. The rim looks a little too thick um, and so forth. Uh, if you look at uh, um, Kozan pieces, they have a fairly, very crisp, um, sharp edge to their, to their tops, like this and like that. And then when you look at this one, um, go back to it. There it is. 
it's too it's it doesn't have that sharp edge you notice how it just sort of comes up sort of curls rather than having that almost a 90 degree angle here you see this this is uh, how sharply it, the rim turns out and um, on here it's a lot gentler and smoother it's more it's more of a transition and uh, again you see that fairly sharp the the vase comes up it hits the bottom of the lip, the top top and then it goes straight across and it, 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 it it's just a, it's just a different style but I so what I think is I think the vase is probably a copy of a Kozan um, uh, and down here again you don't see that very fine detail uh, you have to look at a lot of these, uh, but I, I think this is a copy of a Kozan vase, and it was evidently at one point a table lamp or something, um, so it had a hole in the bottom which they filled. It's not a bad-looking piece of, uh, of, of porcelain, probably made in Seto or something, um, and it's, you know, it's a decent size, and I, I don't know what you paid for it. Um, did you say? Did you? I don't think you said, did you? Um, it could be because of the, the, the shape in the painting. Um, um, this is, uh, next to a real coat. You have a Kozan incense burner. I saw that. Yeah. Um, uh, 41 centimeters. So it's good size. So it's about, about, uh, it's about 16 inches tall. Um, yeah. So, you know, it's, it's, it's just not, it's just, in my opinion, it's not a Kozan example, but just similar to one, uh, the value of it. Um, with the repair in the bottom is probably a couple of hundred, 150 to 250 dollars. Not terribly valuable, I'm afraid, because it's it's not a it's a copy of a Kozan and has a hole in the bottom and it's Japanese, so that sort of <laughs> that's that sort of bangs it up right there. Um, there's some good Kozan examples out there, and they're fun to they're fun to look at because the, the, they're they're so um, uh, uh, beautifully painted. Um, Kuzo Kozan did some of the finest underglazed blue painting that's ever been done to porcelain and and, and hence his, his enormous reputation but uh, I'm afraid this is may have been a student of his or somebody that saw a Kozan piece and said gee that's good looking I'm going to make one of those and it's you know it's hand done this isn't this isn't a machine made thing and I thought they handled the trees on the back here rather well but the rest of the painting here the way the branches are done and then on the other side as we talked about um, with these rocks they're just not in keeping with Kozan, um, Kozan work. That's all there is to it. Okay. All right. Sorry to disappoint you. Be exciting if it was, but uh, alas, it is not. All right. Have a good week, and thank you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.